all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so there are two very interesting studies that are out one i'll discuss today and the other one this is a us study uh, university of southern C- california the other study is from qatar one more s- study from qatar they are coming in with very good studies that study is which i was really waiting for and that was if somebody is infected with omicron what is the protection from the next omicron so that study just came out and here is a the sneak peek the omicron infection protects up to 79.1% or its efficacy for protection is 79.1% that is a beautiful efficacy now what this study does not say is the severity or the how in terms of reinfection if it occurs what is the severity we had done that discussion before the second thing this study does not do is duration of protection because omicron is a more recent pathogen and we do not really have enough time observing it but anyways that's a beautiful study we'll discuss that tomorrow now the second promise that i had done was to talk about the unvaccinated uninfected first infection what happens i'm still looking for the data i'm still trying to figure it out that data is ju- just not the right way it is not present outside in the correct way so then the third study is what i have for you today i think this is a very important study as well and we have been wondering about this for a long time and various studies are pointing out at various things so let me give you this summary right now the summary is this it's a small study 308 people only out of them i think 305 or 6 were actually used it's an online study as well just like i'm trying to make an app where we'll ask questions this is an online study too however the data that they showed is the following they said this is the first ever study who said this that is the credit to the study they said people who have or who develop headache hair loss sore throat and who have obesity as a condition these folks have the highest likelihood of becoming long covid no other chronic condition no other socio demographic aspect no age gender behaviors even smoking was not a contributing factor so the only chronic illness illness or condition obesity and the only acute conditions that could predict the long covid with some likelihood were headache hair loss and um, sore throat interestingly congestion of the lungs shortness of breath that had very low association with long covid and why is that interesting because if somebody has congestion of the lungs or lower respiratory tract infection symptoms then you would suspect that they have a more intense um disease or infection so they may develop more long covid now some of you may be thinking that all right there are conditions for example diabetes uh, for example diabetes or hypertension why aren't they contributing towards long covid so there are some studies that actually consider these to be contributing as well however in this study the authors said w- that they realize that hypertension doubles the risk of hospitalization however the hypertension directly had no relationship no significant relationship towards long covid this is possible hypertensive has a or have a greater chance of ending up in the hospital 
from there those who are hospitalized they have a greater chance of becoming long covid and that is that can be even up to 80% however during this study's period the hospitalization was 5% i believe that nowadays the hospitalization is less so this is a summary let's look at this study it's very interesting study and tomorrow i think we'll have even more beautiful study and that is the katri study so let's start this is drbean.com there is a link in the description if you would like to have more beautiful lectures <laughs> beautiful lectures if i may say so there is a link in the description for an under $100 price one time fee no recurrence and even 7 days money back guarantee you can get access to about 900 videos that are here and all beautiful premium medical content okay this is one this is the study here that we're talking about this is long covid and symptom trajectory in a representative sample of americans in the first year of the pandemic this is the first year of pandemic it is not omicron time so i am still waiting for the omicron study this is why i started making my own app as well because the data for omicron data for vaccine data for long covid is just all over the place this is their pdf and this is another study Uh, this is the zoe app study all right so with this let's start with my drawings so what are the four symptoms that is your test start from the head <laughs> they are mostly on the head except to obesity headache hair loss sore throat and then obesity as a condition so the researchers wanted to answer this question that what are the symptoms that can predict long covid they also did something very smart i really loved that and that is they redefined long covid and why did they redefine they actually have data i'll i'll show you that data they said almost all studies on long covid do not take into account pre infection chronic conditions for example let's say somebody had fatigue before the infection now they got the infection and then they have fatigue as well is that the infection related fatigue or the fatigue before they said most of the studies would just simply attribute that as a presence of a condition after covid so it is long covid so researchers actually removed they did the survey so for example let's say i'm part of the survey they would ask me that do you have any condition before the covid and let's say i say i have fatigue then after covid they ask me do you have any situation going on do you do you have still some symptoms and i say yeah i have fatigue so then they would discount that fatigue if they do not care for the pre infection symptoms then the long covid's likelihood was 40% but if they filter out the pre infection conditions that persisted after infection then the long covid or the new symptoms attributable to covid were 20 some percent then they added hospitalization as a projection it's a small study 308 people so then they did projection for the hospitalization and then accounted that in and raised their number to 23% so back here first ever study that defines long covid accounting for pre infection baseline symptoms using longitudinal data this is the first ever study that did this trick with the definition i think it's a good thing to do secondly this is important to keep in mind as well this study is mainly in unvaccinated individuals the reason for that <laughs> so for the last few days as i've been discussing these katri studies people have started calling me anti science and what um some so it seems like 
just like Dr. Fauci said, I am science. So sometimes when I say something that goes contrary to somebody's opinion, then instead of saying that, hey, you are different from my opinion, they simply say you are anti-science because what they think is right is science. Everything else is anti-science. Although I have only been discussing studies. Okay, back here. This is an, a study in unvaccinated individuals. The reason for that is they started somewhere in March of 2020 when there was no concept of uh, vaccines yet meaning there were no vaccines and then they continued till the march end of 21 where the the vaccines were really in the very early stage so here in their study there were i think only 7 or 12 people with one dose only although authors say that they did the projections and they did analysis four vaccinations and long COVID, and they did not find any fundamental difference of long COVID incidence. However, I would keep that as a minor point because they do not have enough, enough data. So unvaccinated individuals. March 10th, 2021 is when they started. March 31st, 10, 2021. This should be 20. So 20 to 2021 is when they finished. They did a survey online every other week. What they found was, if you do not remove the pre-infection symptoms, existing conditions, not comorbidities, but fatigue or others, then the long COVID was 40%. If you accounted for the existing conditions, then the long COVID was 23% people. This was US population. Now, interestingly, and we have quoted that over here sometimes as well, U UK's Office of National Statistics or ONS, they have calculated the long COVID to be 10%. And I had done that discussion. Whitaker Aol is another uh, team who had done a study of long COVID and prevalence or incidence of it. And they had said 38% of individuals have long COVID. 38% of infected people develop long COVID. This study says 23%. Now, they have a uh, hypothesis here. One, they say that our demographics are different. Secondly, they said our measurement ways are different. Thirdly, they said the number of symptoms asked in the, in the survey is different as well. ONS had asked 12 symptoms. Whitaker A. All, they had asked for 29 symptoms. And this study that we're talking about, they had included 18 symptoms. And they said that it is possible that just because, just as the number of symptoms are more or less, we are falling in the middle of these two because a number of symptoms that we are looking for were also kind of in the middle of these two. However, they said, that our study showed very similar results to other studies that were done in California, for example. There was a non-hospitalized patients long COVID study in California that had said 27% of the patients develop long COVID. So once again, I, I want to remind you, this study's benefit is not the percentage. I think we all kind of have that idea. They did confirm it. They made a little more refinement to it. However, the benefit is what symptoms when present predispose or become predictors of be having long COVID. These four symptoms, headache, hair loss, sore throat, and the condition of obesity are the ones that are predictors. So here are the predictors. Look at these. They have many predictors, but these are the ones that I'm discussing here are the one that had significant data numbers. So headache, odds ratio of 3.37. So 3.37 times odds of developing long COVID if somebody develops headache during the acute disease. The range is... 95% confidence interval, 1.18 to 9.6. So that's a very long, 
very large range that doesn't make me comfortable but again the data size is so small then hair loss odds ratio is 6.94 about seven times so 1.03 to 46.92 that is again a very large range as well and then sore throat 3.56 times and the range is 1.2 to 10.46 however what gives you confidence in this data is that for example chest congestion that did not fall victim to the small sample size and they could show that that chest congestion was actually not associated with a greater likelihood of long covid actually people with the chest uh, congestion had lower risk of long covid obesity on the other hand also had the likelihood of being associated with the long covid and that was odds ratio 5.4 and the range is interesting 2.12 to 13.96 once again these are the four conditions now this is very interesting because i get this question so many times that hey i have for example autoimmune disorders will i become long covid or i have diabetes will i become long covid i have hypertension will i become long covid do i i have uh, git um, immune issues uh, will i become long covid so they actually have laid them out i'll show you in their diagrams existing chronic conditions were not associated with significant data numbers with long covid now that could also be because they just have 308 people or that could be the reality as well so they do say that larger studies should be done so look at this um, excerpt from there predictors of long covid since fever at the infection stage is one of the potential predictors so they said that high fever is also a predictor we exclude body temperature higher than 100.4 during infection stage from our model to avoid multi collinearity 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 multi collinearity those two variables have a correlation coefficient of 0.65 so they remove the fever obesity hair loss headache sore throat the odds among people who experience chest congestion were lower none of the existing chronic health conditions were related to having long covid this is a very important for me more than these four this was interesting that the none of the chronic conditions were associated with the with increasing the risk of long covid the odds were not significantly different across demographics education and the other models so i'll look at that now if somebody did develop long covid in this little cohort 308 people what were the most common symptoms that persisted beyond 3 uh, months 12 weeks and beyond headache 22% of the patients runny nose or stuffy nose 19% abdominal discomfort 18% ig 17% diarrhea 13% now no likelihood is significantly associated with socio demographic situation it was not about poor or not poor or living in this area versus that area long covid we know that covid has these factors long covid did not behavioral for example and interestingly they put some things in the behavior which i thought were not necessarily part of the behavior but anyways they put them age gender race ethnicity education smoking or the presence of chronic conditions so once again the second set of our <laughs> discussion is done now details some more details this was an online system online question self reported answers so that can be a limitation as well mean age of the participants was 46 years 57% were females and before i 
show you that here one more 61% were whites 12% black 22% hispanics and then 50%, 50% of the par participants who became long COVID had no underlying conditions at all. Healthy people. Now they divided the symptom sets into three phases. They said there is a pre-infection phase that was four weeks before becoming positive or having symptoms. And the infection phase or acute phase and then post-infection phase that was 12 weeks after the acute phase. Now long COVID symptom, a long COVID symptom in their definition was a symptom that was not present at pre-infection, was not there before the infection, then was there at the infection and persisted 12 weeks after. However, I had a comment in there that how about those long COVID outcomes where the symptom actually did not appear at the time of acute infection, but appeared afterwards. I did see one, of, one such example in their case that was anosmia. But I think that, that one set is missing. Now, check this out. Existing health conditions. Because underlying medical conditions have been linked to elevated risk of severe illness, not long COVID, severe illness, we examine whether existing health conditions are associated with increased risk of long COVID. Participants were asked, have you ever been told by a doctor, nurse, or other healthcare professionals that you have any of the following medical conditions? Diabetes, cancer, heart disease, high blood pressure, asthma, chronic lung disease, emphysema, COPD, kidney diseases, autoimmune disorders such as rheumatoid arthritis or Crohn's disease, and obesity. Out of all of them, the data was only significant for obesity. That's very interesting for me. Because this has been a lot of... Uh, curiosity in people. So now let's look at some of their tables. Some tables are really interesting. So markers of my homework. So first of all, this table is really interesting, this one. So what this table is, the baseline sample characteristics, so age, uh, race, and so on. Now, if you see over here, for example, look at the age group, 18 to 49. This was the number of cases, population, final sample, people with long COVID, and so on, and the p-value. So again, if you look at this p-value, probably not significant, but there are some p-values that are significant. So this is one table that is interesting. Then if you see these figures, these were very interesting as well. So this is a figure, figure one, which shows the following. Check this out. Let's look at the very first one that says fatigue. They have three bars here, although the colors are not helping. But the very first bar is a condition present before the infection. And before is defined as four weeks before becoming positive or having uh, COVID symptoms. Then the same condition, for example, let's say in this case, it is fatigue. Then during the infection, the same condition becoming pronounced. And then pronounced or more prevalent. So, for example, before the infection, 21% of the participants said, we have fatigue. During the infections, 60% said, we have fatigue. And then if you say after the infection, the third bar is after the infection, the maroon color, 18% said, we have fatigue. So what they mean by showing this diagram is that in the most cases, even if the COVID triggered or accentuated or intensified some symptoms, mostly those 
symptoms on recovery went back to their previous state. So for example, if it was 21, then it became 60% of the people, then it went down back again to 18% of the people. So if you see here, fatigue, body aches, headaches. So what they did was they actually removed those conditions that were pre-existing. So anyways, this is figure one, very interesting to see in terms of how a person would recover and their previous condition will go back to being previous condition. However, hmm, it won't let me. All right, so next one. Sorry, I think they, when you work with the diagrams, the, the system goes out of whack. Then the second diagram, figure two, this was also very interesting. So this diagram is the percent with self-reported symptoms at pre-infection, infection, and post-infection in long COVID. So the previous figure was everyone. Here, this is people who had long COVID. How was their condition? For example, let's look at a long COVID symptom of fatigue and how it behaved. 45% said we have long uh, fatigue, let's say before, then it became 82% and then it became 50%. So it didn't go back to 45%, it went up. Similarly, if you see here, dry skin went up from 25 to 46. Runny nose went up from 29 to 39. So here, what is important takeaway is that the symptom was present before, then it went up during the infection, and then it stayed up. It did come back, but it was above the previous or pre-infection state. Now this is long COVID. Going back to article, I hope it doesn't. So it did mess up again, my apologies. One more is very interesting. Actually, two more. This one, I'm going to open it in a different tab so this doesn't happen. Look at this one. So this is the most prevalent symptoms, which were then observed in the long COVID as well. So headache, runny nose, abdominal discomfort, fatigue. These were the top. Once again, headache, sore throat hair loss and obesity were significantly associated with long COVID. But this is the prevalence of various symptoms in long COVID. So headache being the most common, then runny nose and stuffy nose and abdom or stuffy nose, abdominal discomfort, fatigue, diarrhea, and so on. And finally, this table, table two. This is interesting. So look at this table. Number 308, age 45 to 64, odds ratio of becoming long COVID 0 0.76, so lesser, range 0 0.27 to 2.13. So here, if you see, this is what is interesting. Obesity, 5.44. That was significant. 5.44 times. Headache, 3.37 times. If you look at other numbers, they're kind of one, lesser than one, more than one, but, or they may not have the significant data. 3.37 for headache. Then chest congestion, 0 0.09. Why have they marked it? Because it actually is less um, associated. And hair loss, 6.94. So it will be interesting to give this uh, this table a look. And if you look at the existing conditions, other than obesity, diabetes, cancer, heart disease, high blood pressure, asthma, chronic lung disease, kidney disease, autoimmune disorder, they're all in the lower ranges with non-significant data. Same is true for education. This is interesting for me. The ethnicity, if you see here, and race, non-Hispanic black, 0.46 if you compare them with each other, Hispanic 0 0.72 and non-Hispanic others 0 0.5. So Hispanics had a 
tiny bit of higher um, chance. So this is the discussion. Two important concepts to keep in mind. One I'll discuss in more detail tomorrow. That is the Omicron to Omicron protection, almost 80%. For BA4 and 5, not Omicron BA1 to BA1. Omicron infection providing protection from BA4 and 5, 79%. So that is one we'll discuss more in detail tomorrow. And then here, what are the four main predictors for um, headache, hair loss, sore throat, and obesity? So with this, thank you very much. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share um, if you like this work. There are links in the description. You can buy an account, one-time fee for Dr. Bean, or you can buy me a coffee, or you can use PayPal. You can become <laughs> a patron. There is a link to Substack. There's a link to um, locals as well. There are lots of links in there. And thank you so much. Here is Nurse on Duty, who just became a member. You can actually become a member of youtube as well so john snyder says the u.s census study indicates one in five long COVID. so this is a very similar because here they're saying 23 percent which is almost one little above one in five so with this uh, do you want to go and do art today or do you want to chit chat tomorrow your call i'm going to hang up and if you have any questions or you want to do a chit chat, just put that in the comments below and I would go to the other channel. Thank you and I'll see you soon. And Nurse on Duty, thank you very much for joining.